Good Saturday morning. I'm Chris Horvatich. And I'm Kelsey Anderson. It's 6 o'clock on your Saturday morning. We are standing by waiting for an update from Erie County officials. And it sounds like we do have that. We will go to that live right now. Me from the Department of Public Works uh, to, to fill us in on some of the road conditions and some of the things the county is doing is Karen Hope from our DPW. Uh, intense snowfall machine did continue overnight. It shifted a little bit more in this direction. Uh, Buffalo uh, and other parts of the city were actually uh, were hit pretty hard overnight. Um, city officials did report rates of up to three inches per hour. So they're focusing on the primary routes at this point so that uh, they can get uh, the city cleared up. Morning uh, bands of lake effect are going to now shift north. You can probably tell if you're in the areas that haven't been impacted by the snow yet. Um, you're, you're being impacted. You can see it. It's coming. It's going to shift through the city. It's going to shift up to the north. And it will impact primarily for a, a chunk of the day today, Grand Island, Tonawanda. But also for the first time, I think, uh, in several days, it'll impact the, uh, the Niagara County area. So it's going to stay up there for a good chunk of the day. Then it's going to eventually swing back down through the county, sweeping all the way back through. That'll be sometime later tonight. And it, it according to the National Weather Service, is going to actually set up um, just beyond the Orchard Park area into southern Erie County, but not extreme southern Erie, what we refer to as the Boston Hills. So the areas that have already received quite a bit of snow sometime tonight during the overnight will receive additional amounts that be impacting the 219, obviously. And then it'll eventually settle back down into what is the actual ski country. So. Um, that's just a little bit of an update from the National Weather Service. The impacted areas, in addition to Cheektowaga during the overnight, um, was also the Buffalo Airport. They received just over a foot of snow uh, during the overnight hour, so um, they're working very, very uh, hard now, diligently, to try and get uh, everything up to speed. You'll notice that there are a number of flights that have been canceled uh, in and out of Buffalo, and uh, their hope is that they can get things up to speed by sometime a little bit later this afternoon. But please check the NFTA website and your local airlines to your airlines to see whether or not there's going to be any additional issues. State of emergency remains in place because it gives us the flexibility to make a number of different uh, decisions that we have to make on the fly. Uh, with regards to reevaluating things, travel restrictions are still in place. We will, as I said, reevaluate throughout the course of the day today. But current map uh, stays in place with our travel bans. That inclu includes the the city of Buffalo, south of William Street, uh, towns of Cheektowaga, Lancaster, Alden, West Seneca, Elma, Marilla, Hamburg, Orchard Park, Aurora, Wales, Evans, Eden, and Boston. Uh, roads uh, changes, uh, there really hasn't been any during the overnight. We still have the Thruway, the Skyway, the 400, the 219, parts of Route 5, parts of 20, uh, that area out in Blaisdell, uh, as well as parts of Hamburg, Southwestern Boulevard, uh, do continue to be some, some major trouble areas. But for a little bit more of the specifics with regards to the overnight uh, clearing operations that took place, uh, I'm going to turn things over to Karen Hope. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, our DPW crews have been out and running since Thursday night. We have our full complement of crews out working, not just with our plows, but with all of our trucks and our blowers out. Um, we've seen most of the impacts in the south towns as things are shifting north. We also have had some success in the McKinley and Abbott area where the loaders are working to clear the area. Um, McKinley between 20 and Mile Strip, however, at this time is impassable. Uh, there's lots of stuck tractor trailers between Lake and Abbott, and we estimate there's dozens of vehicles that have been abandoned. These are going to take a lot of time to clear. As far as some reminders, um, use caution if you're clearing the snow from your property or your driveway, uh, direct from AAA. If you go off the road or you get stranded, please call 911. On. If you and any passengers are in the vehicle, please remain in your seatbelts. Only exit your vehicle to make sure that the tailpipe is free from any snow or debris. If you leave your vehicle and you're seriously injured, please be careful about traffic. Don't risk it. A plea from our DPW plow drivers, don't crowd the plow. People should be off the roads. They're going to take a lot of time to do their work, so give them the space that they need if you have to be on the roads. Um, 
I'd call 211 as a resource for free and confidential referrals for any of your basic needs. Of course, be mindful of car carbon monoxide poisoning uh, in your homes. Make sure those furnace vents and dryer vents are free from snow. Dig those out and be mindful of your exhaust pipes in your vehicles if you are stranded and your engine is running. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. Just to give a little bit of an update, because uh, despite the fact that uh, it is the overnight, we still do a lot of things here, and a lot of it is planning for our day today. So as we change crews over here in the next uh, 25 to 30 minutes, uh, they're going to have a lot of things going on. But there was a lot of activity going on throughout the course of the night as well. Uh, we just want to make uh, the message again that, that Karen brought up, too, that Make sure that you're not the reason why ambulances or fire apparatus or the plows uh, can't get through. Stay off the roads. It's Saturday. There's absolutely no reason to be out there today. Um, the only people that need to be out there are public safety individuals, so stay off the roads. Uh, some of the things we're doing overnight, uh, the Evans uh, Center Fire Hall is serving as a shelter. So we worked overnight with them. They've got roughly at this point 40 plus individuals uh, that were stranded. They were more or less rescued and then brought in uh, for warming and for sheltering. Uh, so we've been working overnight with them to uh, take care of some of the creature comforts, including cots and uh, some of the food that uh, obviously you need when you're, you're sitting in there. Uh, we're working on getting uh, some additional uh, overnight uh, cots and, and uh, items for a couple of the other shelters too. And we'll focus on that along with our partners from the state as well as the towns and villages that are hosting these shelters. We do expect, uh, thanks to some uh, some uh, working relationships. Obviously, the county exec, the governor, uh, had some discussions last night. We're going to get some additional resources. We actually have some more of the uh, snow blower, the larger industrial snow blowers that are coming in. They're going to be coming in from the Syracuse area. We're going to get some more assistance from the National Guard too, with regards to helping us to uh, to clear the roads. So those are a couple of the things that have been going on. We do want to also uh, thank our friends at ECC, specifically uh, Bill Ruder, who uh, uh, who got up bright and early we we're supposed to have some crews uh, some urban area rescue crews that were structural collapsed specific teams that were supposed to be in last night around eight o'clock nine o'clock they did not arrive uh, because of some of their travel issues so he met them there at 2 30 this morning and uh, we want to thank him for doing that because that's going to be their base of operation for staging so again we want to thank uh, the folks at ECC as well as their facility and uh, folks that are helping us because we're also utilizing ECC North and some of the other parking lots at South to take some of this snow that uh, we can't just obviously dump it into the lake. So it's part of our debris management plan. Uh, utilities overnight, uh, th there were a number of uh, relatively large scale outages, uh, uh, specifically na uh, NYSIG, but uh, you know, they did manage to get a lot of those individuals back online. It went from several thousand. It's down now to uh, just under a thousand, primarily in the Orchard Park area, as well as some of the, the West Falls areas there. Um, so we're under a thousand, and that's, that's the good news. So uh, the message of the day should be to uh, caution, enjoy. Uh, when I was uh, younger, we used to always watch cartoons on Saturday, maybe stay home, watch, uh, watch the local news to keep up the speed on how things are going, maybe venture out to have a little bit of fun with the kids out in the in the snow but certainly you don't need to be driving uh, today at all and if you're going to be outside you're going to be shoveling if you're going to be uh, doing some type of strenuous activity out there because of this heavy snow please know your limitations better yet know your neighbors and those that can help you or just wait it out and contract this out uh, when when things get a little bit better you're clearing your driveway to go nowhere basically so maybe we shouldn't worry so much about clearing our driveways today so with that uh, we'll take some questions yeah, um, how do you manage dividing your crews between using this reprieve in Orchard Park and Hamburg to get those roads clear and keeping the North Towns that are now getting hit clear? So the North Town, so because of the fact that the North Towns hadn't been hit so hard, the expectation would be that uh, the communities within the North Town start if the snow picks up. It's not in an intensity rate, and, and I think uh, uh, the Deputy Commissioner could also speak to that. You know, two to three inches per hour is not a rate that any of the agencies should have an issue keeping up with, unless, of course, they're 
becomes some visibility problems. But our biggest issue will be is if you know, people decide that they want to come out and go shopping today. So we'll have to adjust and take a look at uh, some of the bans that are out there with regards to travel if things uh, would start to deteriorate. So we don't have to shift crews back and forth. The county is divided into different districts. They'll focus on the north towns. Meanwhile, it's, uh, it's full speed ahead with trying to get the roads cleared, not only of snow, but first we have to get the roads cleared of tractor trailers, dozens of them, as well as uh, individuals that decided to go out and drive and, and are now stuck on those roads. Just going off of that, last night we had about 300 plus tickets reported. Do you guys have an updated number? And just on top of that, um, we have it that cars being towed will go to the Sears lot at the McKinley Mall. Is that still? So those are cars that are being towed that are being towed out of that particular area, that high impacted area, and uh, cars that are being towed uh, that the county is working with, with tow operators to, to get them into that lot. We assisted also with, with the plowing of, of that lot. I don't have an updated number. That's not, uh, that's not one of the numbers that we were focused on during the overnight, but we'd be happy to get that for you. Would you say we're through the worst? Um, I would say until we can see dry pavement and uh, when then we get uh, people and life back to normal, um, I would say we're not there yet. Uh, Mother Nature is supposed to be, you know, still giving a little bit of a wallop to other parts of Erie County, then swinging back through. But, um, but I would say from, from a, a management, an emergency management standpoint and, and all the wheels being um, in motion to get us the resources that we need, I would, I would say, yeah, we've, we're through the worst of it, which is just that asking for things and getting things uh, actually coming to our area in addition to those that were already pre-staged. So I'm, I'm optimistic about it. I have to be. I'm doing the overnight shift, so the, the sooner I don't work 7P to 7A, as all of you have been working, uh, yeah, that's, that's our goal is to get things back um, ship shape as quickly as possible. That's always what we try and do. And on that note, just is there, I know you can't give it right now, but is there any sort of estimate of when those throughways are going to reopen or when driving nets might be taken off? Well, we just want to make sure, I mean, we could be down to dry pavement on the throughway, but you don't want to, just because that's the case, open it up at the Pennsylvania line or in other directions and then cause more of a problem as, because people will take that and then they'll try and exit into areas where it's not so clear. So traditionally what we have done is we've had that collaborative effort between the state and the local municipalities to say, okay, that road's open, our roads are, all of the roads are open and now it's time to, uh, to open things up. So we don't have a timeline on that and quite frankly, some of those roads, we don't have any decision making uh, with regards to that, especially the throughway. But we will communicate with them. I know it's important to get everywhere, but is there one specific area where you guys are focusing, okay, we have to get crews there, or we, we have to get this area first? Yeah, so I would say not so much that we have to get crews there, the areas that need to have the focus already have it, it's we need to get additional crews there. And that's the, that's the area pretty much of, of uh, you know, the Blaisdell area where we had problems yesterday, Miles Strip, uh, Southwestern Boulevard, uh, Route 20, McKinley Parkway, South Park, uh, any of those areas. But, but again, it could be just one car that's abandoned in an area, and if you're sitting in that car, that's your worst nightmare. So we're trying to focus on collectively all of the issues that we have, but that, that right now is, is pretty much ground zero with regards to um, the mess that we have to clear up. The most amount of tractor trailers, vehicles, um, and then inability to be able to get through just to open that up. Great, thanks, be safe. Thanks.